How's it going, everyone? In today's video, I wanted to go over the Transients API in WordPress. This is something that allows you to cache data in the database for a specific amount of time. And it's something that I've used on pretty much every project I've worked on in recent history, so I thought it'd be good to make a tutorial about it. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so there are six functions that you can use when dealing with transients, but we're not gonna be dealing with the multi-site ones because they work the exact same way and anything you learn from here can translate over directly. So we're gonna be dealing with get transient, set transient, and delete transient. And so I wanna show off some real world examples of when those might come in handy. So what I've done is I've set up just a small chunk of code here that's going to help us measure the time that it takes for a chunk of code to execute. So we've got our start time, we've got our end time, we are subtracting them, and then we are echoing out the time in seconds how long that took to process. So everything that happens between here will be measured. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna show off a kind of a large request so we can just make sure that everything is working. So what I have here is a chunk of code that is getting 10 Star Wars planets from an API. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this and we're gonna go over to our browser and see how long it took. So after refreshing the page, that script took about seven and a half seconds, which is an extremely long time to wait for a couple of API requests to come back. So there is better ways to do this, obviously. So let's jump in to see how transients could help us out in this situation. So let's start off by getting rid of the large nasty API requests and put in something that looks like this. So what is going on is we are using our first function here, which is get transient. And all we're doing is we are trying to retrieve a transient with a name that we gave it. However, we haven't set that up just so you know. But that's how you would start out anything when dealing with a transient is, well, do it, does it exist already in the database? The next thing that we would do is something that looks a little bit like this. What we're doing here is we are just setting up an empty array and we are doing what we were doing in the large nasty API request. However, we are storing all of that data in a single array. And once that array has been completed, then what we wanna do is we want to set the transient of Star Wars planets. The second parameter that set transient takes is all the data. So we're gonna pass it that array, which will be serialized into a string. And then we need to give it a time for how long this is going to live. So WordPress has a bunch of constants that are time in seconds. So this is a month in seconds constant. So we're saying that this has to last one month before expiring. So every time that this page gets loaded, it's going to check for the transient. If it doesn't exist, it's going to run this code and then set the transient. So the next time the page is load, loaded, this won't return false anymore, this will return true, and it will skip over this chunk completely. So that's one important thing that I feel like I should point out when dealing with transients, is that someone is going to have to pay for that initial, you know, seven and a half seconds that it takes to get all of these planets. But for every subsequent visitor, for the next month is going to get the single da uh, database call and it will be much faster. So let's see how long this takes. So after refreshing this page, we are, going much faster, as you can see. I'm just refreshing this browser over and over again, and we are getting a much faster result. So initially, before I started recording this piece, it took seven and a half seconds again for that first initial run. And then every subsequent visit, like we're seeing right now, is much faster. And, and since our transient is set for a month, then it's going to be as fast as this for a month. And just to make sure that our data looks good, let's go back and dump and die here. The Star Wars planets. 
and go back and hit refresh and it looks good but we only have nine planets instead of ten so you know let's just go back and we'll change this to you know if it's less than eleven and we'll go back and we'll hit refresh but however there is still nine we don't have the ten that we want and why is that well that's because we have set this to an ex expert uh, to expire in a month from now so if I open up SQL Pro here and we go to the WP options table and we look for an option name that contains Star Wars planets, we have two rows in the database. We have the timeout, so when this transient will expire, and when the or what the transient has as far as data goes. So this is the nine planets. So, I mean, we can come in here and we can highlight both rows, hit delete rows, and then go back and hit refresh. Since the transient is now gone, it's going to take the, you know, seven, eight seconds, whatever it was to go out and fetch all that data. And now we have the 10 planets. However, that's kind of a pain in the butt. And, you know, this probably works if, you know, you're the only one working on the site and you kind of know how things are going. But let's say, these were posts like blog posts or something like that. And you wanted to store, you know, a large list of blog posts in a transient. How would you go about automatically deleting those? So that's the next example that I want to go over. So let's jump back to our code and let's delete what we used to have here. And let's paste in this new chunk that is just grabbing our latest 20 posts and storing it in a transient. So what we want to have happen here is, well, our posts are going to update a lot. Say we're pumping out a post every single day. Do we want to go in every single day to update this? I mean, we could also just set this to, you know, day in seconds, but that doesn't still work because it's going to be a 24 hour period before that refreshes. So if that transient just got set an hour ago and then now we just published our post, we have to wait, you know, 23 and a half hours until our post appears on our page and we don't want that. So what I'm going to show you is a good way to have these recent posts or these transients uh, automatically deleted or refreshed. So let's jump over to our functions.php here. And this is the best way that I know how to get this accomplished is what we have is we're setting an action on save post. We're setting a callback fun function here. And we're saying that if that transient exists and we've just saved a post, we just delete the transient. So it only takes one parameter here and that's a string of the transient that we created. So it's really as easy as that. So you can create a new post, hit save, and it will delete the transients for you. So that will make it so the next time that that page is refreshed, it will grab the new recent posts. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial about transients. And remember, they're not for every situation. There's plenty of reasons to not use transients sometimes. Like for example, when you're doing a navigation menu and you need to highlight the navigation menu items based on the page that you're on, you don't want to store the entire nav menu in there because you're going to get whatever page that navigation menu was saved on, on every other page. So it doesn't always make sense, but so I just, encourage you to, you know, take caution with things like that and use some of the methods that I showed you today about measuring the, the, how long things take to, uh, populate. So if it makes sense, go for it. If it doesn't, I'm sure there's other ways to do it too. That would make a little bit more sense. So anyway, if you like the video, make sure that you hit the like button and leave a comment. Let me know if this is something that you actually use or if there are better ways to do this kind of stuff. So Anyway, thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.